How hard is it to come up with your own tiki cocktail? It's not that hard for our next guest, surprisingly. In this episode of Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour, we welcome back a guest that we haven't seen in a long, long time. One of my closest friends and a Disney artist, McBiff. Hi! He's back! You're back! Yep, that's still here. Oh, sorry about that. No, I didn't know you're not. You don't really like tiki cocktails that much, do you? I don't. No, I know. Not at all. So why are you so good at coming up with them out of thin air? Artist. Oh, he's an artist. World renowned. <laughs> Speaking of world renowned and <clears throat> artistry, we're wearing matching shirts. Yeah, we are. And it's not like we're going on a bike ride together or this whatever, you know? Guy. It's right near, right there. Who's that? Dude, look at this guy. Wait, why'd you put him there? I had especially made. This is the <laughs> brand new shirt by Meg Biff. Yeah! And it's a bit of a tribute to Tiki Oasis. Mm -hmm. And you can see, what's that dude up there? Oh. These are some of the tikis that Sven made me, because I gave him this idea. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, I love this idea, you know, in his German accent. He's like, oh, and then he just started giving me the whole history of... The tikis at the Crown Plaza Hotel. Yeah, but it was originally Hanalei Hotel, but they came from the Luau in Beverly Hills. Right. So, like, same owner. So he transferred everything over. I didn't know all that. I was like, oh, I didn't know all those tikis over there were from the Luau. All kinds of carvings from Oceanic Art. Crazy. When I was in my early, early days of being introduced to the whole tiki world, I took a trip to the Hanalei Hotel before Tiki Oasis existed there. Mm -hmm. And I remember just walking around with a disposable camera, but I remember walking through the, the restaurant and there was like a stream running through it. Yes. There were lava rock walls. There were clam shells. It was beautiful. I love that place. I miss it. That's what this shirt is all about. Well, it started out just friends doing stupid crap. Mm -hmm. And then Sven got involved and gave me the history. I'm like, well, I got to do that too. He had to so, make it more serious. Yeah, had to get more serious. The crime about that hotel <laughs> is that Tiki Oasis was located in Palm Springs for years and years. Yeah. And then they decided they were gonna move to San Diego to this incredible tiki themed hotel. It had to be bigger. And I think it was either the year before they moved over there or maybe the year after that they gutted that restaurant. They did, right? <laughs> they gutted the islands. It's like right before. <laughs> it's like... Well, after Sven got involved, I started doing all the research because that's just what I do anyway. But God, I had no idea on the amount of stuff that wasn't there anymore how beautiful it actually was mm -hmm. compared to when I was going there. Right. It's like, man. So you've included some tikis from the Hanalei. Right. Like, totally. there's that dude right there. I've yeah. shot models with him yep. before with that tiki. Sure did. Got the Hula Girls. The, there's a poster that says the Hula Girls. We've yeah. played room parties and the main stage of Tiki Oasis. I know. It's ridiculous. Who, this whole thing is crazy. Who else? Is that, is that uh, Sven there? Oh, yeah. We got Sven. We got you. We got Doug Dorr because he's all a big old monster. We can't see him. Arnie, of course. Your buddy Arnie, right? My sister May. Can't see, but I got Shag and Big Ed on there. You put Shag in your armpit? Oh yeah. Well, I asked everybody if they're cool with it. I didn't. As I didn't say, hey, dude, you want to be in my armpit? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he said, yeah, go ahead, as long as I'm in your armpit. And then, and then I got me on there smooching with my girl. Ooh. And then Mr. Tiki Head, our buddy Andrew McCain. Yeah, this is a whole tribute to just how much fun we used to have. You know, the creepy creeps, man, everybody mm. playing in the elevators. And yeah. It the was bars. A I mean, I just had so much fun over there. It was a very special time at the uh, Crown Plaza Hotel. It's still a lot of fun. I yeah. Just, it was so tiny and you could, ah, they just didn't care what you did over there. You could do whatever you wanted. Yeah, it was wild. Missed it. We, the Hula Girls played a hotel room with the Untouchables and Agent Orange. Yeah, you did. I in was a there. hotel room. I was there for that. Like, what? How many people <laughs> were in that room? Like 300? Yeah. It was so hot. I like left. I was like, man, I'm hot. But like, how dangerous <laughs> is that? Shouldn't that just collapse? But nobody gave a crap. That was the best part. Oh, it was a different that. era. I mean... The room parties at the the new hotel, I mean, last year, nobody gave a crap either. Some mm -hmm. of them, and it was ridiculous. I mean, it's still just as fun, almost, but... For whatever reason, like, when they change locations, I always, like, give it a couple years. I don't know why. Well, I mean, they kind of had to. Mm -hmm. You know, it's unfortunate what happened to the Hanalei Hotel now, being a... I don't even know what it is <laughs> anymore. <laughs> still a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun. I'm going this year. Okay. Again. Will these shirts be available at? Yeah. Only there. Only, only there. there. Dude, and 
One of the things that I noticed when I put this shirt on is that the fit is incredible. He Finally, worked yeah. super <laughs> hard to get the vintage fit right. So it like hits you right on the shoulders right here. The sleeves are Aww. short, so you can show off how strong you are. <laughs> the hem is like a little bit shorter than normal. Not like unnaturally it's short. It should be. But it's where it should be. Yeah. Sometimes like modern Hawaiian shirts are like really long with yeah. real long drapey sleeves. They have been for a while. Yeah, and they're just kind of uncomfortable, at least for me, I don't me know. Me too. All right, yeah. for everybody. So yeah. you've, dude, you've nailed the fit. Nice. You have a great design featuring me and some other people. That's true. It's all about you. It's the only reason I did it. All right. Rub spike all the time. All right. Talk, it's all right. The shirt is not the reason you're here. I mean, it's part of the reason. Stop doing that. It's so weird, dude. <laughs> the reason you're here is because on the 4th of July... Yeah, we had to... Okay, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> you and your girlfriend came over. Uh -huh. And Arnie, our buddy. <clears throat> Arnie was here. Justin Scarred. Justin Scarred and his beautiful fiance lady. Mm-hmm. Right? Do you remember her name? Allie. Oh, good. Good for you. Thanks. Stop trying to you, test me. I know. But so we're making cocktails, right? Yeah. And, and I'm then, always the jerk on the outside that doesn't like tiki drinks or know how to do any of it. Yeah. Doesn't even like tiki cocktails. Gotta dare. I dare you, McBiff. Yeah. To come up with your own cocktail since you're such an artist. Yeah. Rolled up my sleeves. I'm like, dude, I'll make the best drink you ever had. No but way. Just a crap on the table. And then he did. And guess what? Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> wait a minute. This is like really good. Yeah, it is. I was like, okay. You just threw some stuff together. Beginner's luck. No chance that you could replicate this. Mm -hmm. So then I pull out a pad of Oceanic Arts, uh, like the notebook paper, you know? Yeah. And I go, okay, tell me what was in it. And so he starts making another one. And Bam. I'm writing down all the, all the stuff. Makes it again. It was the same drink. That's so good. And so for this cocktail, we'll be using lemons. Lime. Orange juice. Demerara syrup. Coconut goo. Cinnamon syrup, falernum, Appleton Estate 12 year, El Dorado 12 year, and from Puerto Rico, Havana Club, which is a weird name because this is Havana and it's from Puerto Rico. Okay, so let's start by cutting a lime in half. Yeah, let's do that. Up there? Yep, up there. Go right ahead. You want me to do it? God, I'm gonna do all the work again. I did it once already, twice. We're gonna make two cocktails at the same time, so we're gonna pour it in this shaking tin. Three quarters of an ounce per drink. Are you doing it right? Yeah. So one and a half ounces for two drinks. You always get so mad at me when I don't do it right. God, this thing. One and a half ounces for two drinks. Yeah. Three quarters of an ounce per drink. Yep, that's right. Lemon. Yeah, buddy. So you decided you're gonna include lemon juice in this drink. I did. It's a very tart citrus. Yeah, that's right, but I knew what I was doing. Okay, how much? <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, okay, <laughs> hold on a second here. Okay, so it is three quarters of an ounce per cocktail. So we're looking for another ounce and a half. Ooh, this is like a old timey squeezer. I know? love getting an old timey squeeze. It's my favorite. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh. When was the last time you were on this show? Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, not like long enough. Since we did the McBiff, I think. Oh, yeah. All Three right. quarters of an ounce per cocktail. Okay. It smells delicious already. It smells like a lot of lemon. That's right. You're not gonna get a lemon at orange. Toyota of orange. Remember that? I do. You won't get a lemon. What sure did the second guy say? I don't know. Wait, like, do, do that again. You won't get a lemon. I won't get a lemon? That Toyota of orange. Commercials. I mean, we're doing the orange now, right? How Maybe. much orange juice? One whole ounce times two. Okay. Two ounces. I'm gonna squeeze this by hand. Oh, you're such a strong man. Okay. It's turning me on right now a little All bit. All right. Daddy. Daddy's breezeway. It's kind of weird. Spike. I wish you would stop talking. Really? Yeah. All right. Done talking. Not saying nothing no more. Daddy. Seems like you keep talking. Uh, I need one more orange, please, sir. We're all out. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. okay, wait, hold, hold on, I got a plan. I learned this from my friend Kelly Merrill. You know him? I do know him, he's my favorite. I've taught him everything. He's your favorite what? 
coctologist. Uh, sometimes Look at you, you. I know, you can put like smaller segments in there. Is that two ounces? <clears throat> no. F Close one, dude. We almost ruined your cocktail. That's right. Okay. This is art. So by cutting the orange into smaller pieces, we can get a little more juice out of it. Not saying nothing. One ounce per cocktail, two ounces for two. <laughs> There's a lot of alcohol in this drink. Is there? Three whole ounces. <laughs> really? Per cocktail. Is that why you're like, ah, we should probably make them in two separate things? Yeah, but mm. you know, I'm smart. Okay. Let's move on to the cinnamon syrup. Quarter ounce of cinnamon syrup each. You want to pour a half ounce of cinnamon syrup in there? I do want to do that. So I have to pour a half ounce? Right there. It's all, God, you've used this thing a lot. You can't even see the numbers anymore in there. Do you just have it memorized? I mean, I know where stuff is. It's right before. Perfect. Three quarters, right? This bottle was donated to the show by Kelly Merrill. He did? Mm -hmm. What a nice guy. There you go. Thank you, Kelly. Couldn't have done this without you. Quarter ounce per cocktail. And then how much falernum per cocktail? Half ounce each. Okay, so one ounce One for ounce, two. bud. Perfect. I'm so good at it. Remember when I did this the first time and I couldn't do it? Yeah. Well, yeah. You've gotten very good at this. Cocktologist. With a smile. <laughs> Havana okay. Club? No, Demerara sugar oh. syrup. Now, why did you choose Demerara sugar syrup over simple syrup? because it was on the table. Good choice. Yeah. I just grabbed whatever was on the bar here and just made something oh. special. That's what I did. So half ounce each? Yeah. So that, that would be like one ounce, right? That would be one ounce or two. <gasps> mm. Yes. Eh. Eh. Might be a little sweeter. That's all right. It's a, it's half a, an ounce it's per it's cocktail. Touch this is getting heavy. There's a lot of liquid in there. Mm -hmm. We haven't got the little liquor yet, really. Okay, so let's do the liquor now. Havana Club? Sure. How much of that? <clears throat> one ounce each. It's like one ounce of everything. What the heck is it too? Yeah, God, dude, this thing is used. Did you get it at the swap meet? Okay, two ounces of Havana Club. So you need a gold Puerto Rican rum. Yeah. Okay. Or Havana if you got it. That's cinnamon syrup. Yeah, I was just admiring the bottle. So Appleton 12 is one of my favorite dark Jamaican rums. Mine too. Okay, and so for the dark Jamaican rum, we're gonna use- Two ounces of this stuff, so one ounce per cocktail. Did you hear that? What? Whoa. You really love that sound, bud. Everybody loves that sound. Bam! One ounce per cocktail of dark Jamaican rum. God. So if you don't have this, you could also use like a Karuba or uh, what else you like? No, you gotta do it this way exactly. Okay. And the final rum, you got a whole, you got a brand new bottle there, huh? That's right. Is a Demerara rum. Timing. One ounce each. Three ounces in this one, bud. So one so ounce per cocktail yeah. again. Okay, so there was one final ingredient that you like oh, snuck yeah. into the cocktail. Sure did. That seemed totally extraneous. Yeah. And what was that special ingredient? Coconut. And how do you measure this out? A dollop. What's a dollop? Just a <laughs> It's already, it's already coming out. Dollop, that's kind of a lot. That was probably two. Yeah. I remember you just went like this. You went meh. Okay. I pretty much, yeah, so I mean, that, that that's probably what happened. Like a half a squeeze. I don't even squeeze it, just oh, okay. dollops. All right, man, so this is where it gets complicated. Okay. So we gotta put some ice in there. Okay. Mix it up mm -hmm. first with your cool Hamilton mixer doer thing. Mm -hmm. And then we shake it. Oh, okay, so you're gonna mix it and then shake it. Yeah, and then mix it again on here. Okay. That's how you gotta do it. Is there a reason for that technique? That's how it works. Are there cocksmiths out there like Martin Kate, Garrett Richard, who use that technique? I don't know. You know, you get geniuses that figure out new methods mm -hmm. and everybody calls it crazy until they try it. Mm. So you're on the forefront Genius. of cocktail design. The Albert Einstein of Tiki Cocktails here. Okay, so how much ice are we gonna put into this thing? Mm, we're gonna eyeball it. Scoop? Yeah, we'll do one scoop. We're gonna put more ice in when we shake it. That's what I did. 
So you take that. Yeah. How long do you mix it for? Oh, I don't know, just until it feels right. Okay. So we're gonna do that. Yeah, that's about. Maybe be a little more careful with it. <laughs> okay, that's not part of the technique? No. So we're gonna put some more ice in it. Okay. <laughs> we're gonna shake it. I don't know if there's gonna be any room. Sure there is. Yeah, that's fine. We won't put more ice in it when we do it again over here. Hmm. It's a whole thing, man. Just go with it. Okay, and then you shake it? Sexy shake it. Oh, sexy? What does that mean? You get, you get rough first. You need to just take your time. Until she says you're doing it good. I can hear. Who says that? The cocktail. Oh. The cocktail's a, a, a female? Yes, she is. All right. It's like a steamship. Okay, cool. So then the drink's done, right? Nope. What do you mean, no? We gotta mix it one more time. Careful. Just a little bit more. Just a dollop more. Yeah, buddy. Here we go. Okay. Now she's done. And then you wanted to serve it in some tall glasses, right? I sure do. Okay, because you're fancy like that, right? That's right. right. Look at that. It seems like with all of that mixing and shaking and mixing, the drinks got really big. And I think that's the induction of all the water that you <laughs> introduced to the drink. See, you gotta do that because if you don't do that, it's a little tart, it's a little too tart. Oh, okay, so you want a lot of water in it. Little... Dilution. Yeah. Okay, there's still some in here, but I feel like we should probably top this off. Yeah, yeah, we do that. Okay. Is there a special way to garnish these? Yes, there is. Okay, and how would you like to do that? We are going to make orange slices. We'll cut your thumb off. You need that for artistry. Is that too thick? I think that's probably pretty good. And that just goes on the side? Yep. Look how pretty that is already. And then you also said some mint, right? Yep. Okay, why don't we just take this whole bustle here. Bustle? Bustle of mint. That's what they call a group of mint, is a bustle. Is it really? I thought you made that up. I feel like I made it up too. Okay, here's yours. Thanks. Here's you want to slap one. together? Uh, well, let's go ahead and just twist off the bottoms. Oh, there. you want to twist together first and then slap it? All right, I'm down. Now, the reason you want to smack the mint, of course, if you're if you're new to the whole thing, is to express the oils. Mm -hmm. And then once you bring that cocktail up to your nose, you smell all the mint. Yeah. Bad mint. And then we'll just tuck that behind the orange. These are almost kind of over full. Man, that's pretty. Look at that. Now folks, if you've enjoyed this, please be sure to hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Join the Patreon. If you join the Patreon, I will send you this enamel pin that you will get. You also get opportunities to buy merch before it goes on sale to the general public because it always, always sells out. At the end of every episode, when it premieres, we do the Breezeway After Dark, which is like a live Zoom conversation. It gets weird. You can have a cocktail with me. Maybe you can have a cocktail with McBiff. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you can. Now this episode is sponsored by Tiki Farm. Tiki what? Really? Yeah. Oh, cool. Tiki Farm is the largest manufacturer and designer of vintage style tiki cocktail glasses and accoutrement. Holden's cool. Holden is cool. Do you, uh, you have any Tiki Farm mugs? Not yet. Oh. Do you think eventually there will be a McBiff oh, yeah. Tiki Farm oh, mug? Oh, he's been like hardcore messaging you? me <laughs> for oh, really? two years to make one and I just haven't done it yet. What's the hang up? I just want to make a really cool Tiki mug. I guess I'm a little insecure about it. Mm. So, yeah. Stage but I just, yeah, but now I, I got I got some good ideas now. Okay, so keep an eye out for the future with a McBiff Tiki mug. Future. Maybe it'll be that thing. Maybe it'll be me. Yeah, I'm gonna make a spike mug. <laughs> That'd be weird. So go to tikifarm.com to check out their brand new stuff. They always have new mugs coming out, like this one right here, just in time for Tiki Oasis. Nice, right on. And of course, from Surfside Sips, these are the Spikes Breezeway Cocktail Hour Glass Bamboo Straws. If you're interested in these, go to surfsidesips.com, enter Breezeway in the coupon code, and drink out of a glass bamboo straw just like McBiff. Surfside Sips from Spikes Breezeways. And so, from the 4th of July, at the Breezeway, from McBiff. Cocktologist. This 
is the McTiki. McTiki. That's right. Cheers. Mm. It's very drippy. Oh, Ooh, just as good as Fourth of July. That is a. Uh, it is very fruity. Well balanced. Well balanced. A lot of you get a hint of the cinnamon. Can't even taste the alcohol. Three ounces. You certainly cannot taste the alcohol. Dude, that's like a perfect tiki cocktail. It's very good. It's on the beachcomber. Kiss my ass. My word. So you get a lot of the citrus up front, but then once you get past that, it's all of the notes that are like. It's delicious. It's That's like, I mean, I'm not even lying. I hate these things. And that one's good. I hate these things. I do. Yeah, he drinks like whiskey. Scotch and whiskey. Yeah, yeah. like a, an Irish bagpiper. Yeah. No, but because tiki drinks to me, they always taste really acidic, you know? This one doesn't. It doesn't. Even though there's lemon juice in there, It's it feels very round. It does taste round. I do think the coconut goo helps to kind of smooth the whole thing out. There is a bit of like a mouthfeel that um, I think is... Res resulted from the coconut Mouth cream. Theme. Yeah. Like when you drink it, it's like a little bit creamy. Mm, that's a good mouth feel. <laughs> you gonna spike out? <laughs> spike out? What are you talking about? Dude. What? All right. I've been saying this for years. You've been saying what? Spiking out. What is spike out? Spike at? has this thing he does that I love because I'm always trying to get him to feel really awkward. I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen that in the past. The more awkward you get, the more he's like, hmm. And he spikes out. He just leaves. And then you don't see him for like 20 minutes until the awkward's gone. I love it. Hmm. <laughs> I love that. It's my favorite. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> I don't do that. Yeah, what are you, you talking do, you about? You do that all the time. That was a joke. That was no, comedy no, effect. Dude, you do that all the time. That's how you know I'm a professional entertainer. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I just finally told you about it. Shouldn't have done that. But it's funny. Now you'll notice it. Hmm. And everybody else, too. All right. I do have to say that I enjoy this drink. Right? If you're at home and you have these ingredients, I would urge you... To try this thing, I. Like, it's, it's weird. weird that it's good because you know that's the best part about this, because all these guys over here, thinking they're all top dog with all the cocktail stuff. Top dog. Yeah. Like, like who? You. Me. You know all these bartender people that love rum. So y'all dared me to make. Oh, oh. I'm like, oh, I can make a cocktail. I'll just make something up, dude. It'll be way better than anything we had tonight. Mm -hmm. It was a whole bunch of. Pfft, you yeah. Know. Of course it was. I'm like, I watch. Bam, bam, bam. And I measured it. I measured each thing, just like you taught me on all the episodes I had over here. True. We got that. It's very it's good. Freaking perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I think we were all very surprised that this drink was so good. And I was even more surprised that you could re-replicate it. Yeah. It was like the best feeling ever when they all expected it to be horrible. They're like, oh, we're going to hate this. And then their faces were like, hmm. And then it just, they're like surprised and like, then they admitted it was good. I like, told you. What is going on down here? Sparky, he wants to play. <laughs> He's down here playing with his duck that I got him. No! No, all right. Sparky can't have cocktails. Huh. Want your duck? <laughs> <laughs> and then later that night. We blew the sky up. We blew up the sky. It was awesome. You brought like <laughs> rockets here. I brought all the mortars from Nevada. Yeah. It was awesome. It's pretty fun. Well, I'm happy to have you back on the show. It's Thank been you. a lot of fun. Yeah. Missed you. It's good to see you again. It's been, you know, two, two, three years since I've seen you. <laughs> Weren't you just here for the 4th of July? Oh, well. Oh. Go to Tiki Oasis. Get these shirts. They're rad. Yeah. I finally have, like, an exclusive thing for Tiki Oasis. Like, yeah. Shag was like, why don't you have anything exclusive? So I'm doing it. <laughs> so go to Tiki Oasis, visit McBiff at his booth, buy one of these shirts. But you forgot the coolest thing I'm going to have at my booth. What's I told that? you about earlier. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be a party to this. Come on. Yeah, you do. I'm going to have a really fun thing to do when you buy anything from my booth. Okay, so explain it to me. I'm making a McBiff glory hole. 
but we're calling it the o Oa Hole, right? So when you buy something, you're gonna be able to stick your hand in there. In where? In the hole. <clears throat> I'm making it's a whole bathroom stall I'm building, man. And you're gonna be able to grab something out of it, and you're gonna get something cool out of it. It's fun. It's All old right. school. Uh oh, a hole. So with that, folks, if you enjoyed this, please be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and if you don't hit that subscribe button, you're not going to be able to use the uh, oh a hole. So I haven't been to the new Tiki Oasis. Um, Sparky! And so for this... <laughs> and so for this cocktail, we will be using... I'm not smiling? <laughs> smiling. It's my cocktail, I know what's in it. Orange! Aren't you glad there's oranges in it? I think you used that joke before. <laughs> it's better the second time around. Okay. Careful! Is that rare? Yeah! Yes! You almost owed me $7,000. I won't do that again. Okay. <laughs> That's a lot, really? No, nah, not $7,000. Probably like $150. No. Okay. Oh, I'll break it. You put your hand on that. Demerara? That's what she said. Sorry, I'm trying to be cool. It's be less working. cool, please. Okay. A Havana Club. Join the club. You know what I like about limes? Never mind. Should we do it two in one? Two cocktails, one cup? Don't say it like that, that's weird. It's not weird. It's weird. I like one cocktail, one cup. What? One cocktail, one cup. All right, you know what? Let's go ahead. It's me and you tonight. We're doing two cocktails, one cup. It's really weird. Okay. So, are we filming this? <laughs> I'm not putting that in the video. I don't need to get attacked by the rum people. Yeah, right. <laughs> now, there is one special ingredient that I remember you adding and I was like, I don't think that's gonna do anything. And you get... <laughs> Sparky. Right. It's hot up in this bitch. A little bit. All right, we're gonna do two dollops. Hold on. Girl. I like pants. I like no pants. I'm not wearing any pants. And of course, from Surfside Sibs, these are Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour Glass Bamboo. Sparky! <laughs> Stop! Put them inside. Crying. <laughs> you can let him, let him down. He just wants to go find the rat. Go get the rat. <laughs> if you're interested in these, go to Breezeway. All y'all at home. This is, not, this is not getting any better. Yeah, it is. Any of you with, <sighs> Any of you who have never had a cocktail should try this at home. <laughs> never had a cocktail? Like, yeah. Just, what are they doing watching this show? This will be the first one you ever have. What if they don't drink? Well, they will when they have that. <laughs> is that how you want to end it? I do. Yeah. Is that is that do you think you can do that better? Probably. Hit the glory hole button, folks. That's a good cocktail. Later. I've had several cocktails tonight. Like two Mai Tais, mm -hmm. two beers, mm -hmm. and a McTiki. So what were you talking about? The difference between cocksmith and coctologist. But I was telling you the story about the first time I said cocksmith, that was at Kohl's. What do you mean Kohl's? Kohl's in, uh, it's not a diner, but it's Kohl's down in downtown LA on 6th Street. Yeah, French dips. French dips, but they have a beautiful bar. You know, the guys are all in like a vest and a tie, you know, the sleeves rolled up, man. It's like what you want to see when somebody makes a cocktail for you, mm. you know? And he was, I was like, all right, I want, I want your old fashioned, you know. Mm -hmm. And I just sat there, it took him like five minutes to make it, fresh fruit, you know, whatever, you know, didn't use stupid maraschino cherries or whatever, like people do, you know. I was like, God, ah, that's beautiful, man. You're a cocksmith. <laughs> and he, he just kind of laughed, said, oh man, I like that. It's like, that's right, you're a cocksmith. Mm -hmm. And I just started saying that whenever I saw a good bartender, like a really good bartender that really cared about what they were doing, I'm like, that's a cocksmith.
But now we have coctologist. Yeah, what's the difference? Coctologist is an artist. Okay. They can create beautiful new cocktails that people want to try. Okay. So you're in introducing all like a whole new lexicon. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Yeah. I'm the world's first coctologist. <laughs> right behind Don the Beachcomber and Trader Vic. Okay. If he was a real guy. If he was a real guy. <laughs> just joking. Well, oh. you know Trader Vic's yeah? was originally gonna be called Trader Paul's. What? Did you know that? <laughs> It didn't sound cool enough, so they called it Trader Vicks. What are you talking about Trader Paul? That's what it was going to be. No, no. Yeah. What? Yeah. It was Trader Paul. Why would it be called Paul? Because it was Paul. Not it's not Vic. It's not Victor Bergeron? No, it was Paul. He worked with Vic. And they just it didn't sound cool enough, so they, they're like, no, we got to go with, with Vic on this one. Can somebody fact check this? <laughs> I'm serious, too. Really? Yeah. So anyway. Trader Paul's? Trader Paul's. You have ruined the night <laughs> with your stupid Trader Paul. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway. So you got Don the Beachcomber. Trader Paul. <laughs> Jesus. And now McBiff. Okay. Yeah, you three. You... Don and Paul. 